Good evening, everyone. It being about 6.39, we'll get the meeting started. Call meeting order. Can I have a motion to accept the agenda? Move to accept. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It is 3-0. Three 3-0. Three um, two quick things. Um, Comcast just crashed, so we are not live right now. We may be live in a little bit. Um, so that is uh, um, why you may be seeing this later than Tuesday night. And uh, John will be here in a couple of minutes. So we'll start, why don't we start right in with a walk-in. Are there any walk-ins here this evening? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll move on to item number three, which is a discussion vote for an outdoor entertainment permit, a DJ for a wedding reception <coughs> on 139 Edward Foster Road. Is anyone here for that? Come on up. How you doing? How you doing? I'm <coughs> DJ what? Kelleher. This is my fiance Amanda Barrow. Hi. And we're here to request an um, outdoor entertainment permit for June 23rd, 2012 at 139 Edward Foster Road. Uh, the event will start at 5 p.m. and go till 10.30 p.m. And there will be a DJ there having amp amplified music. And we have already notified all the immediate neighbors and have a parking permit of 55 spaces at Peggotty Beach parking lot with a shuttle uh, along with it. Great, so it's a private residence? Yep. Mm -hmm. And you've asked all the neighbors yep. and mm -hmm. nothing back? Great. Yep. And it's on June 23rd, you said? Yep. For the two of you? Yep. Correct. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, discussion? I think they covered all the bases. Great. Um, and I'm sorry, the time was till 10 o'clock, so the DJ will play till 10? 10? 10.30. 10.30. Okay, so let's change. 10 to 10. So whoever's making the motion, it's from 5 to 10.30. Motion. Move the board a second vote to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to Amanda Barrow for a DJ to play amplified music from 5 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. at a wedding reception at 139 Edward Foster Road. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous. Congratulations. It's going to be a beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you. Hope, so. <laughs> hope so. Great for us. Have fun. Thank you. See you guys. Okay, moving on to item number four, which is a discussion vote for a temporary extension of an indoor entertainment license at the River Club. Anyone here for them? No one? So this is for the, um, just the Cohasset uh, after prom party? Yes. So they want to change the hours? Um, can we currently give them one, Kim? They did last year. Did we already give them one for this year or no? No, we did not. Okay, so it's, it, this is a new one. It's not a, ch uh, it's a change. They've had it for the past uh, three or four years, I believe, and it just extends their indoor entertainment license, their annual one, um, from 12, which usually ends at 12 midnight to 3 in the morning, yeah. just for DJ indoor music. Great. Do you know if they asked the neighbors and informed them? Yes, they said they did. They, they've done... They said they did it the same way that they've done it past year. Tonight. Yeah, they've been there four years, and there's right. been no problems. Okay. Well, good. Please. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the temporary extension of the indoor entertainment license for the River Club, 78 Border Street, from May 26, 2012, from 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. for the after-prom party? Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Um, you know what I meant to ask before we got started? Is anyone recording the meeting? This evening? No one is? Great. Um, moving on to item number five, which is a one day wine and malt beverage license um, at Citrus Harbor uh, Community Building. Or is it uh, Carlton Sullivan? Anyone here for that? Come on up. So you are, tell us what you're going to do. Um, First tell us who you are and your address. Um, I'm Pat Carlton, 48 Seaview Ave. Right. And we are celebrating our daughter's graduation from college. Uh, we're sponsoring it with her husband. So that's, uh, she's Julia Carlton Sullivan. And it's at the Citrus Harbor Community Building, which we feel very privileged to be one of the last ones to use it for a private function. Great. And we will be hiring uh, Beth Golden, uh, who has submitted her liability insurance. She's uh, done several functions here. That is how I met her. When she, 
she was doing a private function, I asked if I could just see the layout. And the guest, the host, let me, uh, very graciously let me come in. And that's where I met Beth. Okay. Great spot. Um, and it's from, it's on this weekend? Yes, Saturday from? Saturday the 26th um, from 4 to 8. 4 to 8. Right. And now how are you going to clean it? Are you, are you guys going to clean it? Did you hire a cleaner to? Uh, we were going to clean it. Okay, great. That's the one yeah. concern that we've had. Any discussion? We, we, uh, we requested it. We are invited people for 4 to 8, but we had requested it, I think, from 2 to 10, so they would have plenty of time to set up and to clean up. From 2 to 10? Okay. Just, well, uh, so I know motion. Pat and I know Kevin. They're great people, and I know they'll do a great job. So. Okay. Motion? Please. Move the Board of Select to go to grant a one-day wine and malt beverage license to the Carlton slash Sullivan family for a function that to be held on Saturday, May 26, 2012, from 4 to 8, 2 to 10, two to 10 from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the Situate Harbor Community Building, 44 Jericho Road. Second. Second by Mr. Dini. For the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Congratulations. <laughs> Item number six is a uh, discussion vote permission to use the town owned parking lot uh, for the North Situate Farmers Market. Mr. Chairman, yes. I'm sorry. If we could just have clarification on, on item number five that you just voted mm -hmm. on. May I speak to Ms. Yes. Did you want the liquor license? No, just from Could we correct that motion to, to, for just liquor being served from four to eight? Um, they, they have the building until 10 for cleanup. Okay. Not going to be serving alcohol. Do you want to? Joe's motion. Just move, move to motion. amend. Just move to amend. Move to amend. Someone amended. Second that. Great. So it's amended. Four to eight. 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 Four and represent my wife, Jessica. Mark Flaherty, 34 Stockbridge Road. Great. And you guys are here to ask permission to use the um, North Situate uh, T parking lot for the farmer's market. That is this the second, the third year? This will be year number four. Year number four. Wow. Yes. Cruising Great. right along. Great. Going very um, well. Quick, anyone have any uh, concerns? We've got pictures and Obviously, the experience of the last years, I don't think there's been any complaints. Yep, last year went very, very well. Year three really came together. And we have some new people. We're uh, fully insured with the Massachusetts Federation of Agriculture. So the whole market is insured. Um, and the town as well. And through the town. Right. Okay. Great motion. Just, uh, we'll just, just let you know, it's Wednesdays afternoon. Wednesdays from 3 to 7. Three to seven. Starting Stop. June twentieth through the last uh, Wednesday in September. Yep. All right. <laughs> PR going for you, Mark. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate that, John. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant <coughs> permission to the Situate Farmers Market to utilize the town-owned parking lot in front of the WPA building in that Situate on Wednesdays from two p.m. to seven p.m. June through October, in accordance with all rules and regulations set forth by the Situate Police Department. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous 4 0. Good luck, guys. You did Thank a great job, much. and you know, keep it up. We'll see you at the market. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Moving on to item number seven, which is the seawall easement for 117 Turner Road. Um, is Kevin coming in? I don't I think don't know she just went to get somebody. Trisha ran out for a second. Thank you, so. Al. Here. So this is the issue where we need an easement to get on his land to do the proper repair to the seawall over on um, Edward Foster Road, uh, Turner Road. Turner. Al, do you want to? Yes. Sorry, you're moving along very quickly tonight, gentlemen. This is item number seven? Item seven, yep. Yes. Um, as you remember, two weeks ago, we came to you discussing the need to take an easement at the property at 117 Turner Road. Um, at that time, there was some discussion that perhaps the owner, Mr. Farrington, would grant an easement and therefore the board would not have to take that action. There were discussions uh, between uh, Mr. Farrington and, and several other members of the town 
uh, concerning this, Mr. Farrington has uh, written us as of Friday, uh, indicating that he does not wish to grant an easement. So we went back to him, we postponed it for two weeks, we went back to him to try and get a, that John's suggestion of limited easement, and we just couldn't work that out. So now... Well, we, yeah, we, uh, he appeared to uh, change his mind. The discussion here was that the word, inserting the word limited would, in fact, uh, solve the problem. Uh, consultation with town, the town attorney said that is a reasonable thing to go do if it would, you know, uh, move things along. We've incurred some legal costs as a result of this uh, and wasted two, two weeks and now we're at this juncture where we're back at the table asking for the same thing we asked for before. And I, I'd just like to, for the record, state that um, Mr. Farrington in his letter to the Department of Public Works indicated uh, through several statements that he felt that indeed the work uh, would provide little to no benefit to his properties. Um, and I responded to him to the effect that in actuality, the uh, repairing the seawall that's um, adjacent to and, and uh, parcel in front of his property uh, would significantly improve the value of the property versus today where basically there's a stone rubble wall that was a temporary fix put in now 18 months ago in an attempt to hold back the seas so that the house, the adjacent house and the houses behind aren't washed away. Uh, the temporary fix is in place. It's by no means pretty. Uh, the fix we're now going to make using public monies uh, is going to be a significant improvement in the strength of that seawall, uh, improving the footing, the face, the height, and importantly, improving what's known <coughs> as the splashback area, where now uh, storm surges come over the wall and erode what's behind, uh, tear the sand away, and cause the wall to have no foundation and therefore collapse like this and then break apart. So this uh, repair uh, is not only going to repair the breach, it's going to install an engineered splashback that is on about two-thirds of the wall that's fronting his property and then repairing the stone revetment that's 100 percent in front of his property. Excellent. So we would suggest that in fact this is a structure that will um, improve at public expense his property significantly. John, did you have? Just, Al, just to, I know that the wall, there's only a small portion of the wall, but you're saying the stone revetment in directly in front of the wall facing the ocean is getting replaced? The entire stone revetment along all three properties and plus adjacent properties is being repaired and replaced, yes. Okay. So the, the first line of defense is the stone revetment. That's 100% being replaced. Then there is the concrete stone wall, the concrete wall, which is a small, a small portion, portion on this portion of property. On the rear. Only, we're only going to the cut lines, where uh, cut lines on both sides. And then the splashback is intended to prevent the section that we repaired and the adjacent sections from being undermined. I'm with you. Okay. Thank you. And this is all <clears throat> public seawall that we're, <clears throat> excuse me, that we're repairing, um, although it does have obviously benefit to, to him, you know, if it breaches, then he's going to feel a lot of the pain of the breach. So in a nutshell, what's going to happen is we're going to have to file, sign this easement, file the easement for the taking. There'll be some sort of battle at this point in time in terms of using it or not using it. We'll have to appraise his property and, and go through this. It'll be delayed probably for an extended period of time. Well, actually, I think what will happen is you'll, you'll do the taking. Um, then we'll incur some legal expense in doing the filing and in, in uh, Plymouth County at that point uh, the land has been easement has been taken and we will proceed to go out for bid we've got, we've had the bid package ready since December uh, wall all engineered reviewed it with all the neighbors uh, and so we will then immediately go out to bid uh, expect within say six weeks we'll begin out be out there doing construction Great. Uh, motion Can I, have I have a couple of questions Al, um uh, this easement that we're going to take, is that so that can be used down the road in 10 or 20 years? So we wouldn't have to go through this if this, another storm were to, re, you know, do damage to the seawall? Right. This is an easement just as if, uh, let's say on your street, um, uh, we agreed we were going to put in some drainage right. to improve the street and the properties in the area. However, the drainage needed to have an outfall, and you would grant us an easement across your property, 
the town right. would install at public expense that drainage pipe, mm -hmm. cover it, and you would grant an easement in perpetuity for the limited purposes of us being able to repair that. Let's say mm -hmm. there was a collapse mm -hmm. of the um, drainage system, or it needed to be a TV camera because it was filled up. Right. Uh, we would have the ability to, for the limited purposes of maintaining it, go in there and do that maintenance and then come back out again. That's the same thing here. This is an easement uh, for accessing it to maintain it. It's not an easement for parking on it or an easement for using it as a beach, an easement for anything other than being able to maintain this splashback which protects the wall, which protects his and other properties. Okay, so this is probably between his house and another house. Okay, it doesn't. It's not in front of his house. It's to access. Uh, it's, be, it's between this seawall, and it, there's this. There's the seawall, and right. then there's a splash pad behind right. it. Right. Yes. All right. So it's. He's the only. Oh no, the others have already granted their easements. That's correct. Okay, the woman that was here last time when we talked about this said that this work was done without granting any easements. Was it the same type of work? Has technology changed? Is that why? We have to have an easement now where we didn't before? I don't know about before. I think, I well. thought she was saying that it was done from the seaside, the ocean side. How, right. As the, opposed to from doing it from the property side, from the, the home side. And I think that's what she was saying. And I, I my understanding was, with t was talking to, I forget the guy's name, but his name was Mooney from DCR, is that by getting a, an easement on the back side of the wall, closest to the house, it's less costly because you have to deal with the tides right. and all that other stuff. But also, if there's a further breach along the wall, this is the way to gain access because right. because of the, the proximity of the homes because they're so close. So they'll start where an opening to go back there. So it's a, it again. Go back to the drainage easement. You know, uh, in the drainage easement, you if you're going to spend money to put in drainage, you right. want to be able to maintain it. Right. The same thing. If we're going to make repairs to this wall on the back side and the front side, we want to be able to get in and maintain it. Uh, other walls, such as uh, some of the seawall work done recently along the cliffs, was all done from the seaside, mm -hmm. and therefore no easements were needed on those properties. It was only revetment repair. Uh, however, we did need to trespass across some properties to get to it, and so we needed to get easements from those property owners prior to being able to go across their properties to get to where the repairs were made. And then what do we do at the annual town meeting? The easements. We did something so we don't have to go through this process. Uh, we had a warrant article uh, at town meeting that Refresh. we that was that was not um, f carried forward. There was a, a pro it was a proposed warrant article at town meeting to uh, take easements all up and down the coast. No, right. what Sean's referring to oh. is the, the last town meeting, right? Because we couldn't. Um, Obtain these or no? Was it without doing a taking? So that right. town meeting approved the town being able to do takings All for right. this purpose because what we've been doing since the storm is trying to get access. And when we weren't granted access, we had to get town meeting authorization to be allowed to do a taking. But that's, so that's going forward for any type of takings along the wall in the future, not just walls. specific places. Yes, absolutely. Right. Four exactly. seawalls. Right. right. That's good. Thanks. And John pointed out that the other two neighbors that are on this diagram have both given you mm -hmm. easements. Right. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Great. Well, I think we, we extended mm -hmm. ourselves another two weeks to try and make it happen, and it still didn't happen. So um, we're to the point now where we have to proceed with this. So the motion. <clears throat> yeah, probably motion. <laughs> Move the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the order of taking for the property at 117 Turner Road to construct and make repairs to the seawall structure on said property pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 79, Section 6, as amended in Article 16 of the October 25th, 2012 Special Town Meeting. Warwick. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Three. Uh, I said I. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Four uh, to nothing is unanimous. Great. Thank you, Rob. Oh. Um, moving on to item number eight, which is um, a discussion for the um, Hawker Peddler's license, the food cart. Mr. Healy, how are you? 
So, just your name and address. Uh, James Healy, 71 Lighthouse Road. Okay. So you came to just recap. You came to us before. You wanted to put a, a vending hot dog device machine cart, cart. in um, Pier 44 parking lot. We suggested a couple other places. You went and looked at it, and you had to get approval from uh, the Satua Tavern to sell something across the street from them. You've looked at the other place. Don't like it. The other place we suggested on Jericho Road. It's not your your choice. We've got a letter here from Satua Tavern saying that they don't mind you selling across the street. And now we're back again. And are you you're still asking for your first choice to be the parking lot of Pier 44 Correct. in that back? Be the southeast corner. Southeast corner. So as you're looking at the building, far back right near the water. Correct. Um, your backup choice uh, in the material here that we have is on Cole Parkway. At the uh, uh, boat ramp. Well, it's, I think, Conservation Park. Sorry, Conservation yeah. Park. Which Ooh. I don't know if that raises an issue as far as I just thought of this the other day with uh, Widow's Walk across the street. I don't know, with the 300 feet. Yep. If it's from the building itself or from the property, uh, it could be an issue. You have to look at it. Um, but the town, you'd be asking it from the town, not from a private. Right, but it's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so at this point in time, why don't we talk about his first choice, which is the Pier 44 parking lot. We have a, um, we have a diagram of it somewhere right here. Um, and did Officer, was it Officer Donovan going to go look and make sure that? Thompson. Officer Thompson, Thompson, sorry. I met with him a couple weeks ago. Yep. And this spot, I imagine, isn't any problems because it's far up the street. The other one, um, he was fine with those spots. Yeah, for the most part, we both agreed on that, that particular spot, the southeast corner there of the parking lot. Okay, so we'll deal with that. So any dis discussion on going into um, the Pier 44 parking lot? <clears throat> the only thing that, you know, at some point in time over the next couple of months, we're going to be doing something with that area. That's fine. So if we knock the building down, turn it into a park, do something, then obviously that's all going to be contingent and you'd have to move. Understandable. If we, if we decide to do that. My only, um, raising this after Mr. Healy had come in uh, a year ago, we had a discussion with another applicant for the same site. Mm -hmm. At the time, the board said no and actually suggested another location in town. Um, out of fairness to that applicant, who is not an applicant this year and has no intention of, of a hawker peddler's license, I do feel it's important for us to at least raise that issue and discuss it, given the fact that a year ago we said no to somebody who asked for the same location. Um, and how does the board feel? Because I don't recall specifically the justification other than I thought it was due to the fact that we were going to be doing something with the site. And now that we have a report, uh, how the board feels about suggesting Mr. Healy use that location for this year or for the summer. Good point. Did, that, did we vote a, um, a license for that person last year at another location? And did they use it? No. No. They, right. So they got a a license for Egypt, was yes, Egypt the beach parking lot, and they never came and picked it up. Um, no, nor has that same person applied this year. Did not apply this year. I don't think we're. I don't think we have the responsibility to. If somebody applies in one year, to hold their reservation for any certain spot for a whole other year, um, you know, a lot can change in a year. A lot can change in a couple of months. The build. A lot has happened on a property in terms of them coming back to us and. You know, it was kind of in an early state of flux, I mean, this is my opinion, when she came to us before. So um, I believe if she had come again this year and asked for it, you know, then there would be a conflict and we would probably say, well, you asked for it the year before. She may have, you know, some sort of standing above you, but she didn't. And, um, you know, it's one of those weird scenarios where um, maybe she wishes she had, maybe she's not interested at all, seeing as she didn't pick up the one from last year. but. You know, we can only deal with what we're given, I think. Any other thoughts or comments? Any, any? Only comment I have is is that um, we're not, by virtue of granting it this year, there's not a, um, 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 a right or an ob I don't want to say guarantee a right, but a guarantee that next year that right. location will be yep. there, given the fact that the board is going to be making some decisions on yep. that property. Yeah, Could very well be there for the next Right. 10 or 15 yeah, years, just in the meantime, just to let you know, yeah, Mr. Healy. Whatever okay. you guys decide, and we'll take it from there. But okay. for now, it's. Okay. Want a motion? Please. 
Sure. Anyone else to talk about it? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I don't think anyone. I'll move that vote. the board Stop. selectmen vote to grant a Hawker Peddler's license to James Michael Healy, doing business as Harbor, Harbor Dogs for a mobile cart to be located at Pier 44 um, parking lot with um, the specific location in that parking lot to be coordinated with the Situate Police Department's traffic enforcement officer and the Board of Selectmen in accordance with all the conditions set forth in the Hawker Peddler's policy, uh, number 53-12. The applicant may sell the following products, all beef hot dogs, chips, candy bars, bottled water, and soda. Second. 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 Oh, Second sorry. Mr. Norton. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Good luck. Thank you very much. Good luck, Mr. Hill. Thanks. Good luck, Mike. Moving on to item number nine. This is a, uh, the town response to an alleged open meeting law complaint. Um, as most of you know or, or may know if you, if you read the Mariner, um, there was a uh, allegation that the Board of Selectmen um, violated an open meeting law and a complaint was filed uh, against the editor, from the editor of the Mariner against the town. Um, the proper procedure for that is for the town to respond to the specific allegations. Um, town Council has done that and uh, we've all been given the document that, um, that has been prepared. We've all read it. We've made um, our own uh, changes to it through the town administrator and we have a final document in front of us that needs to be submitted to um, the mariner for their review um, at that point in time it'll go where it goes based on on how they feel about the response um, there was a comment in in the mariner that said that we filed for an extension um, the reason why an extension was filed was not because um, we were tardy in doing anything it was filed because it has to be voted in an open meeting and this was our next open meeting, which is tonight. So um, the document is prepared, and um, I'm happy with it. If the rest of the board is, we can motion. make a motion to review. Move the board of selectmen. Uh, <coughs> move that the board of selectmen have reviewed and approved the response prepared by town council relative to the alleged open meeting law violation, and to submit it to the appli appli applicable parties uh, on our behalf. Second. Second by Mr. Danny. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous 4 to 0. Moving on to item number 10, um, which is the appointment <coughs> uh, for a designee to participate in the school contract votes pursuant to Chapter 150E. Um, and I, I want to you know, thank the school committee and, and Mike Hayes for you know, staying on top of this. We talked about this. Who was chair? You were chair last. You know, we talked about this last year. Um, Per Chapter 150E, the um, Board of Selectmen can have a designee be involved in the contracts of other um, parties, and uh, the school committee has asked us to be involved, and in this motion here, we're going to um, assign, is that the proper word? Um, appoint Point. Um, the town administrator to sit on that committee on our behalf, and she'll be one of five? Six. Six, with the... Um, Superintendent. So the committee, the superintendent, and, uh, and Tricia will be. No, no. The superintendent is not. Five school committee. Five committee school committee. And the board's designated. And the board's designated. So it'll be one of six on the committee. And the school contract is up in June. So they're um, starting to get into those negotiations now. Any questions, Motion. comments? Motion, please. Move the Board of Selectmen appoint Patricia A. Vincasey, town administrator, as the board's designee to participate in the school contract votes pursuant to Chapter 150E of the Massachusetts uh, General Laws. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous 4 to 0. Moving on to item number 11, which is uh, acceptance of a gift, a memorial bench on Glades Road in the Minot, Minot Beach area. And, um, what we're doing here is, uh, having done this, Al's there, correct me where I'm wrong, um, there's a party in town who will keep uh, anonymous right now who is purchasing a bench from the town and getting it in, uh, installed uh, by the town at their expense and actually giving it to the town, to the property of the town. And what they uh, will do is inscribe 
um, something on the bench, in, you know, for for a loved one or someone who's passed away. And uh, we've accepted a number of these over the years. This is probably the first one this year, but um, all the expenses are covered by um, the donor, and uh, and we sub out to get it constructed properly, and we get it put on a place of. Don't read that. No, no. they don't want. To. Okay. Um, and that's what it is. So. Uh, to right. clarify that. Uh, and make clear to the public the, the reason that we're not reading the name now is because the donor is doing it in memoriam to a friend's uh, passing and would like to then uh, have a ceremony to uh, to do that. So therefore, it's not public. Right. right. Typically, we would say who it was, but in this case, right. Right. because of the ceremonies that are coming up, they want it to be a secret. Just on that point out, are, are, is the DPW um, aware or, or, or told when it's finalized and when it's put up at all, or the DPW involved? Or the reason why we're asking is, the, is that once it's public, it would be nice to then come back and say, okay, when we talked about this back in May, let's just give some acknowledgement. <coughs> That's yep. my point. Uh, who, who gets notified that it's finally installed? Well, they actually install it. They hire the contractor. We hire the contractor to install you do. It. Okay. So if you we, we, could you let us we know? We have bench made. We have the charge. We have delivered. We install the bench uh, and, and tell the, in this case, the donor of it at, so that he or she can arrange for their ceremony. Perfect. I was going to say, once the ceremony's been done, could you at least inform the board so that we can then yes. publicly announce it? That's right. my point. Right. Yeah. Right. So motion? Motion, please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to accept on the town's behalf a gift of a granite memorial bench to be installed on the edge of Glades Road by Minot Beach. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Aye. It is four nothing unanimous. <coughs> Moving on to item number twelve, which is the uh, reorganization of the board. Um, at this point, I'll ask for any uh, nominations. There's uh, three positions that we're discussing. Actually, two: um, the chair, the vice chair, and the clerk. Um, typically, the cha prior chair sits as the vice chair, as John did this year. So why don't we start with the chair. Are there any nominations for someone to be I'll chairman? move that the Board of Selectmen vote Joseph P. Norton to serve as the chairman of the Board of Selectmen for the town of Situate. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Second by Mr. Harris, reluctantly. No. Um, <laughs> Joe? <laughs> you didn't second yourself. Um, any discussion? Great. Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 It is quick, unanimous. Quick I move that the Board of Selectmen vote um, Sean Harris to serve as clerk of the Board of the Selectmen for the town of <laughs> Situate. Don't second that. So we're going to put Rick, leave Rick on. I don't care. It's fine. Second. Second by <laughs> Mr. Norton. <laughs> <laughs> even. We're even. Yeah. Uh, any discussion? No discussion, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's four to zero unanimously in favor of that. So, and I, do you have to vote for the vice chair or is that just automatic? I think it's automatic. By default. Yeah. 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 Great. Um, before, before we move on, Mr. Chairman, uh, can I just have a, one moment of personal privilege, if I may? John. John's <coughs> in the card. John has been asked for the moment of personal privilege. <laughs> I'm going to hand it to you. He's going to speak it. I'm not going to speak at all. Tony, well, <laughs> just there's a card, a card uh, for you, and, and signed by uh, selectman, town administrator, and, and, and Sheila and Kim. Thank you really for all your work. It was not an easy year. I mean, there's no such thing as an easy year, but this was a particularly a, a difficult one. We thank you for it. We have a little memento, a gift to be given to you, which is in the mail. I guess it's the best way. <laughs> so you'll be getting that in a week. Hey, mail cars? <laughs> uh, but again, thank you very much for everything you've done. We really appreciate it. The town appreciates it. Just have a great job. So thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. since I've been the chair. Um, and this will be my last uh, opportunity to talk. I, it's been a privilege to be the chair. Um, I, I like doing it. I, I like being a selectman, as we all do. It's hard work. Um, there's a lot of time involved, but, but we do get a lot out of it. Um, and I, I know um, that the board has taken definite steps forward that will benefit the town in the long term. I know that we've done that this year. I want to thank all of you, the board up here, for your hard work and the time that you put into this. Um, 
I want to thank uh, the town employees for all the support that they give us and all the background work and information that they give us before meetings. I particularly want to thank the town administrator, Trisha Finkese. Um You do a phenomenal job. We don't always see eye to eye, but, um, but we, we deal with a lot of issues. Um, I respect your professionalism. I respect your hard work. Um, you're definitely an asset to this town, and uh, the far majority of the people in this town know and realize that. So thank you, thank you for your work and the work <coughs> that you do to make us look good up here. Um, lastly, <clears throat> just like to thank two other groups. You know, the first one is four little kids: um, Sophia, Matthew, uh, Olivia, and Michael. Um, the novelty of seeing your dad on TV on Tuesday nights wears off real quickly, as as you all know, <laughs> and. Um, you know, now it's just one less night that you can play catch or help with homework or all that sort of stuff. So thank you guys for your uh, support. And um, lastly, uh, who probably the most important is my lovely wife, Anne. You know, it's truly a team event, as all of you guys know. Um, you know, she supports us and, and, and me in this effort, and she's very involved in the town also. And um, her activities always take the back seat to this. And, and I don't know if that's fair, but that's the way it happens. And, and you know, she's a, she's a great person for allowing that to happen. So thank you, honey, for, uh, for all this as well. It's, uh, this is for you, too. So thank you all. And I know I'm passing the gavel over to very competent hands. Does that happen now? or? Uh, Why don't you finish it off by okay. the time we change? Change seats? Just as soon do it this way. Great. Thank you all very much. Um, we'll move on to item number 13, then, which is uh, other business. None. 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 I'll hold. I can hold off for another a couple of weeks. Okay, I'm going to rattle through a few real quick things. Um, Borndale. I want to thank all of the sixth grade teachers that take all these kids to Borndale. It's a wonderful experience. The teachers stay overnight um, for a whole week, and it's really uh, the kids love it, and the teachers and then the parents that go and help out. They they give a lot of time and energy, and it's really above and beyond what they do, and they they they're awesome for doing it. Um, there's a couple of uh, plays coming up that I want people to be aware of on Friday and Saturday night. Um, there's one, I think John will be at one of them, uh, The Little Mermaid over at the high school on Friday night and Robin Hood on Saturday night. Um, great shows, they're free, come and get some uh, entertainment. Um, there is, uh, last week there was um, Spring for the Arts held over at the high school where art art pieces from all of the kids in all of the schools gets presented there. And um, it is unbelievable the talent that these kids have in, in, at such a young age. And you walk around, literally the whole high school first floor is taken up with art all over the place. And every kid has at least one piece in there. And the work that the high school kids are doing, it's just phenomenal. Um, so the people that put that together and, and, uh, and all the artists, you know, thank you. It's a great job. And uh, lastly, um, the music festival at Gates, which is coming up on June 9th, which is again kids' bands um, and food and music, and it's a great event for everyone to go to on June 9th. Um, so that's all I've got. Oh, in the parade. parade. Yes, I parade. Say, yeah. uh, Memorial Day this weekend. Um, on Monday, we have a parade that we march from Town Hall up to the Common, and then we have a ceremony up there. Um, the chairman will be given a 45 minute speech about uh, <laughs> the significance of Memorial Day. But that starts at 11, is it? 10. I was going to say 10 at Town Hall, but I'm not. 10. I think it's 10. It's Mar oh, it's at 10, okay. Um, check the website to confirm the date. But um, you know, the baseball teams, the different sporting events, the Girl Scouts, um, everybody marches up there. It's a great time um, up, at, uh, up at the Common. Um, and that's all I have. Anything else <laughs> did I miss? Great. Move on to item number 14, acceptance of the minutes. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the regular session minutes of June 28th, 2011? Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Which unanimous four to zero. Abstain. I think I was out there. And the second minutes? Will the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the executive session minutes for April 24th, 2012? Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous 420. Item number 15 is adjournment. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Second by Mr. Dehaney. Thank you all for coming. It's uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous. Thank you all very much.
Have a good night. Thanks, Zach. I want you to